Voices of Defiance podcast number 44, recorded live in front of an internet audience on Sunday, August 23rd, 2015. I'm Wayne. I'm Jay. And I'm Stargate Pioneer from the Starling Tribune. A podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. And get ready, because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up, since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. Watch out, everybody. It's raining butt plugs. Hello, I'm your oh. host of Stargate Pioneer. My friends call me SP, and with me is the woman who I think was completely just embarrassed right now. Her name is Shannon. I can't believe you. I told you that would catch on. I told you. See? For my head. You two are dorks. <laughs> what? what? I told you that <laughs> would catch on. And also with me is the man who seems to be swearing this morning. His name is Sean. Yeah, you'll like to <laughs> my edits there. I just like to make other work for people. There you go. Let's make up another word. Yeah, yeah, shitaco. It should shitaco works. Shitaco, shitaco. It's not hard, dude. Shitaco. Shitaco is too I much get, like, like Stalin. Like German. Like like sassy taco. Shitaco. <laughs> shitaco. Shh. Don't quiet tacos. Shitaco. Quiet. Not shitaco. We're not quieting the tacos. <laughs> I don't want a talking taco. <laughs> Oh, yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll be talking Season 3, Episode 12, the penultimate Season 3 episode today, The Awakening. Just a reminder, you can catch us at GunnaGeek.com. Go to our podcast page there and contact us. It's contact information's on top. You can find all the great ways you can reach us, including our voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1 or 612-888-2751. So, aside from not talking tacos this morning, we have a, a very well done episode. And do you guys know why it was very well done? Because there were flying butt plugs. <laughs> yeah. <that> econo- <laughs> environmentally friendly, by the way, because they dissolve after use. <laughs> that is the no, <laughs> no aftermath or evidence hiding butt plug. <laughs> it's new to the market. <laughs> new to the market. But no, aside from <laughs> dissolving butt plugs, it was directed by Michael Nankin, who is one of the Defiance producers. He's got history with Caprica, Flash Forward, BSG, but also he's directed about three episodes every season from The Last Unicorn, The World We Seize, I Almost Prayed, All Things Must Pass, The Cord and the Axe, In My Secret Life, Great episode. The Opposite of Hallelujah, Everything is Broken, Past is Prologue, A Well-Respected Man, and Down in the Ground Where the Dead Men Go. So he has some directing experience, and then it was co-written by two guys who also have a lot of experience, Todd Slavkin and Darren Schwimmer. And they've done Broken Bow together, All Things Must Pass together, Beast of Burdens, The Bride Wore Black, and Brothers in Arms. So these three have been a team since season one. Well, now his name will forever be synonymous with disintegrating butt plugs. So (laughs) don't ruin it, man. That's the, uh, (laughs) she said, it's like, don't ruin it. You're going to make him mad. I ain't worried about his feelings. Just don't ruin it for me. <laughs> you know you love it. All right. So anyway, what an incredible episode. How can we not start without talking about the end first? Because that was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. The baby. That was horrible. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. Did you turn away? No, but I kind of muted it. Uh, well, Alec tried. Kudos to Alec because he tried. First, he tried to shoot. He emptied his clip into Kinsey. And then he tried, like, holding the baby away from her. And all she had to do was sprout the teeth and, like, bite him in the neck and he's done, right? But it was an arm wrestling match. And Alec did pretty good until he just couldn't hold on anymore. Tony, I was waiting that entire scene for Stalma to stand up and actually 
do something other than scream and be thrown against the wall? I, I mean, know. Come on, where's the tea killing woman? She needs to take some lessons from Berlin. A little self-defense, or Arissa, for that matter. And Arissa doesn't like to kill, so I mean, she didn't have to kill, but she, yeah, she needed to create some... What is it you say in self-defense? You're creating time and distance, right? Yeah. I mean, basically, you're creating opportunity, and yeah, time and distance are what you need. Opportunity is what you get. Right. And she was creating neither. <laughs> no. <laughs> she was being dragged on the floor. Oh, that was a nice shot. And my gal Andina got her neck crunched. I'm like, oh, I was so she sad. She became a Pez. I was so sad. She wasn't a Pez. That was. Uh, she, I liked Dina. She was, she great. was cool, and she was getting cooler. And she's like, you know, I think we should do patient. You know, I'm nothing if not patient. And you don't think about your mom. Think about your kid. You know, I mean, she was actually giving good advice. She so was doing good debate. things, <laughs> and she was wicked hot. And now she's dead. And uh, it just uh, permanent Amy, case of scoliosis. Amy, you did phenomenal job playing Andina. Really appreciate it. We kind of saw her go a little. I don't want to say dark, maybe conniving or whatever, but she did so absolutely perfectly, except for getting in the way of Kinsey. It, you just don't. You you well, run. even that was valid. I mean, even that she was trying to protect the family that she was wanting to become a part of. Yeah, she was sworn to it. Yeah, so she's the cannon fodder, maybe, but, I mean, come on. She'd been with the show for a year and a half, and right before the final to be pezzed like that, as you said, it's just, uh I was very unhappy. Of all the people, I was very surprised to be unhappy to hide this season. Adina, I really thought she was going to make it. I was really interested in her character. We should have had her on the show before she kicked off, but <laughs> she was so sweet. Yeah, she was. Voted off the island. She's welcome on the podcast anytime. So, Amy, if you hear this, we welcome you to uh, set what up the What are the time. odds? I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Although, okay, I have a theory, and I haven't told you guys yet, so you want to hear what my theory is? Sure. You know who's going to come and save them? Pilar. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, come on. You think on. Pilar's going to bust through the door with a shotgun and say- Zombie Pilar? If you want to live? I don't think so. I do, because we didn't see the body. She's still alive. You know- I don't think wait so. Wait a minute. Okay, now, I, I agree with you on that, because for the same reason, we never saw the body. I'm not entirely 100% convinced that she's dead. Otherwise, why would Nolan make the comment? Why? Why bother making a comment other than letting the audience think about it? Right. But I don't think she's going to come busting through the door to help. Well, they did tip the hat to both Christy and Rafe this season. Alex said, I miss Christy. Nolan was, it was in the bar, right? That he mentioned Rafe. Well, he's making out with another chick. <laughs> he's looking at their pictures right before he kisses Adina. Yeah, that was. Mmm, Adina, you smell good. Mmm, Medina. <laughs> yeah, I was, that's totally what, it, maybe that's just what I would do, but. Well, I think this cements the way absolutely for Arissa to come in with Alec. If not next episode, next season, I think the two are going to get together. <laughs> That's what I was saying here. We're so much for that poll that we put out. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't think Adina won. No, but Adina was gaining support. There were many more tweets this week about Adina than there were the week before. So I think Adina was great. And I think we saw how good she was both for Alec and Luke at the end. I really like, I was actually up, more upset about the whole Adina dying thing than I was many other parts of the episode. Everything except for the baby eating thing. Like normally in stuff, they'll say, oh yeah, you know, I eat babies. You know, that's always the joke. And then there's my girl, it's eating a baby. We're about to. Well, she was sniffing him, definitely. Um, you know, I, I could say the only part that I really didn't like or enjoy about this particular episode is. When the Omec are eating the people, and it looks like they're eating raw hamburger meat. I mean, that just, that was disgusting. I was fine with that. I like a rare steak. Have you not seen Walking Dead at all? I have seen it, but I don't like zombies. That's probably why I didn't like this part. Well, they're not zombies because Daytag shivved one in the brain. and He was still alive until Doc emptied out amanda's clip into her make my well, day you know apparently six bullets in your brain so is, how come you if can you're kill not kinsey right how come you can kill them and not kinsey because well, kinsey has the power she's the leader she's the, she ate the heart because when she ate the heart her skin instantly became inch thick kevlar it's a literal taking of power not a physical one or not a metaphysical one or something you just lost me there at metaphysical Sometimes you just got to go with it. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm drawing a card. We have a mail delivery service every cast that comes under the door. 
uh-huh. because Kayla knows we're here and she's up and she's doing things. The other one's on a nap. So she delivers cards. So I have to draw and then send back to her so we can have some kind of semblance of peace. Otherwise, the mail keeps coming. Sort of like Harry <laughs> Potter, the owl and the envelope <laughs> yeah. deliveries. No post on Sunday, you know, and but we get post on Sunday. So you're the mean stepfather or whatever his name was, uncle? Mr. Dursley? I don't think so. I don't feel like a Mr. Dursley. I'm entirely too cool and entirely too sexual for that. I don't think Mr. Dursley <laughs> have ever, you know, like, has engaged in coitus in the last century. Well, he would have to because of the cousin. I forget his name. No, I think that's just a clone, really. <laughs> Doc Yule came to... Yeah, I think it's a clone. Hogsworth. I'm just Getting saying. back to Doc Yule. She's awesome. Oh, she's awesome. awesome in this episode. And thank you very much for Doc Yule. Trenna Keaton came with us to do an interview yesterday. We thank you very much, Trenna, for coming by. It was great. Go check that out. Thank you very much, Trenna, for spending your time with us. She really did amazing, and she's been good all season. It's just always fun to talk to her. I would love to say this was a Doc Yule-centric episode, but there was so much going on that it wasn't just Doc Yule. It was really comprehensive across the cast. The existing cast left in defiance. But she had a lot of great quotes. I'm not a disreputable lawyer. I'm a disreputable doctor. When correcting Daytech on his shyster, I'm engineered for slavery. It's embarrassing. And the quips go on and on and on. Mama's got her groove back. That was great. The dirty, hairy thing. Yeah. So she definitely was back, was in true form was kind of the life of the party all the way up to, hey, Side Braid actually unplugged her. I loved the moment between her and Amanda whenever she's like, Amanda, please give me the gun. But just talking to her when she talks to Amanda, you could tell it was such a good moments there. Yeah, it was. But Amanda was actually holding her. Of course, she was restraining her, but she was holding. And you never know. Doc Yule might like the restraints. The bondage? Yeah, she might. I would like Doc Yule in bondage. That would be fine. I think that's it, just inherent. They have an inherent submissive streak. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're built for they slavery. Do. So there you go. See, that's why you need to get with Kinsey. This is exactly why this needs to happen. Okay, so if you get with Kinsey, like Nolan should have, then you get Kinsey, but you also get Doc Yule. And I'm sure Kinsey would be fine with, hey, could we get Doc Yule in on this one and dress her up like this or whatever? I'm sure Kinsey would be fine with that. That's why you need to date Kinsey, y'all. Well, Well, I'm happy that speaking of Nolan, you finally get to see the moment between Amanda and Nolan. I thought that was a sweet moment that I've been waiting for when they finally kissed. Finally, which is something that should have happened when he was leaving the jail cell to head towards Brazil. Just so cute together. I should fit. So, okay, Nolan is supposed to be Han Solo, you know, give or take, right? Uh, Roughly. If he's Han Solo, why when Han Han Han, whatever. Mr. Shataco. Yeah, exactly. It's how we call him in the Midwest. It's just, it's what happens. Anyway, so Mr. Solo is constantly escaping this season in his, I guess it's actually Pottinger's old vehicle, the Range Rover, right? So he's constantly getting out. So when is the Millennium Falcon going to break down when he's driving away? When is that going to happen? I don't think it does. I don't think it does because the Millennium Falcon doesn't actually break down. It just has some high end problems. I see. Okay, light speed, that's a high-end problem. That's a top-end performance problem. It never just doesn't start unless Chewie's ripped it apart. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, I'm just waiting for it to happen because they're constantly leaving. And Kinsey doesn't have any bullets. I mean, she doesn't have any guns. All she has is her teeth. That's her weapon, right? So she can't really shoot the car. Highly effective, though. And she could probably throw the car if she got her hands on it. Now she could, as much as she was thrown around Stalma Stalma. and... Alec and, and Dina, throw yeah. him into the wall. Yeah, my girl's a little power hungry right now. I'm hoping... I think she's just hungry at the moment. I don't yeah, know. there's... I think she's had know. enough to eat. She, her children are hungry, though, and they need food. And, oh, give him the ginger. No, no, he was first. Pick him. Yeah, okay. Wow, watch her humans <laughs> turn on each other, dude. I know. And Daytech, okay, so he's not just thinking of himself. He is baiting her to let him out because he knows he needs to go protect Stoma. So if Pilar's doesn't come and save them in the Macaulay's house, Daytech's going to be the one that comes and tries to save them because he's out now. He is, and well, he might be tracking for Stoma. 
Well, yeah, because when he was fighting the Omec and he took off running, then he disappeared because even they lost him. So you don't know where he went. I mean, you know where he's going, but, but you don't know where he disappeared to. Away? <laughs> Away it from the It could be Omec. Daytech. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be Pilar, but we will see. Maybe it's both. Yeah, that'd be a combination of waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, that would. Oh, so. Maybe the law keeper will come help him. Yeah, Berlin's on. Oh, Berlin was just scared out of her mind when she's going around. And then the tension between her and Arissa, it's always there, right? But she's like, really? They're Omec. They're killing everybody. And you just want to talk to them? That's not going to well, end well. That's the whole well, Arissa doesn't want to kill any, anymore. And you would think that Berlin would be happy about that. But and tease her more about it. But I don't know. I just. It, that's a shaky relationship that they have and for no one to parton them up and you know stick them out on the streets again that was kind of crazy but berlin seems to have forgiven and forgetting so we need to talk about our boy samir he was so fanboying i know as the rest of us you know first of all i don't want to to pee on me either but okay but he's like religiously praying i am sorry i haven't believed in you up till now but if you are up there, I will believe in you forever and just come save me. And then Nolan comes to say, I think he's going to turn into a religious freak. I think he's going to start the Church of Nolan. No, it's just a classic damsel in distress situation. Like I, we were saying with Trina yesterday, he's a damsel in distress. That's the role he's playing. And he's playing very well. Very 1950s, Kong saved me from the well, know, I don't know, he, type thing. But it was more specific. I knew you would save me. That's what he said when Nolan's standing on top of the, the box cart. You know, I knew you would save me. You might have something there because... He's a damsel in distress, I'm telling you. <laughs> he is. And he's a little bit psychotic at the moment. I mean, the dude has been... He's got to have POW, PSD. First of all, six months with Poopinger, and then another week or so in Doc's Cage of Horrors. That's not going to end well. So Suncats in the chat said, I am so worried that something is going to happen with to Doc at the end of the season and Samir is being groomed as her replacement. I don't think that's too far from the truth because as we're discussing with Trena yesterday, she mentioned that the first version of the script where the clones first come out is that it was actually Doc Yule that died. So we actually lost her. In the first version of the in script. The first, before we got revived. In the first version of The Matrix. <laughs> Right. Before we got a revision, we had lost Doc for the season. That would suck. Actually, no, I think we lost the original Doc, but they were already making clones, which is what she said. Yeah, but so she... it would be a clone of her that was living on. We wouldn't have lost the entire but character. But she also said there would have been a whole different character. Well, yeah, but it would have still been Doc Yule. It'll just be a different Doc Yule. Yeah, it would have been Maybe trying Doc to... Buell or Doc <laughs> Fuel. <laughs> Doc Sewell. Sewell. Doc Sewell. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't happen that way. I'm glad they changed it. Yeah. I do not like blue docks, Sam I am. <laughs> well, they were white, right? Yeah, I just couldn't get to white. Uh-huh. Yeah. White sack, but not, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Guest 55 in the chat said, new book next season, Joshua Nolan, Amazing God of the Badlands. I just don't think that's going to sell as hot as Arissa's book. I wouldn't if it was illustrated as far as I was concerned. Uh, I see. We wouldn't have the pretty pictures on the front. No. I personally think... That what we're going to see is we're going to see my girl, Kinsey, will be beaten. She will be stopped and she'll have, I don't think they're going to kill her. Or I hope they don't kill her. I hope they convince her that she is has been doing the, the Votan and human race is bad and probably wind up killing most of her kin, which will force her to live here with the rest of us and play nice. And personally, I think she should start a book, which is naked Kinsey cooking and just go on a book tour. All about pancakes? Yeah. yeah. Pancakes and sex and, you know. Yeah, I'm sitting here watching you and you're trying to form these ideas and you're talking about how what you think is going to happen for next season, but I knew. <laughs> I knew it somehow it wasn't going to be an actual prediction. Of it what is you an think actual prediction. Be. She I could knew. do a book tour on how to cook pancakes naked. I knew you were going to go that route. Sean is right about one thing, though. The only economic center of commerce that's going right now in Defiance is the need want. That is the basis of the economic system in Defiance. And really, who's left to go in there? You lost half the people in the mine. Doesn't Amanda still own it? Well, Amanda hasn't been in there. No, not been in there. She still owns it, doesn't she? She owns it, yes, because it belonged to Kinsey. But what I'm saying, you've lost half the town. I think Amanda and Berlin have a joint bedroom upstairs. 
Really? Well, yeah. Last episode, I mentioned when did they start sleeping? I think they've been... <laughs> and now they're going to share with Nolan? Is that it? <laughs> eh, well, I mean, they both have shared Nolan before, so I mean, it would just be together. Nolan, Amanda, and Berlin, and the cat clock. And the cat clock. Yeah, but the cat clock is a paper I want the now. cat clock, Tim. You, I, will, I will find you a cat clock. No, no, really, I'm just playing. I don't want that creepy thing anywhere in the house. <laughs> Make sure it's got a camera in it, shot. <laughs> What's the point if it doesn't have a camera? No creepy cat clock. And you're going to have to wipe all the uh, lotion off of it, too. So I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Sean, you are a World War II buff, and you like World War II movies, right? I am, and I do, yes. So did the whole day of bombardment from the butt plugs from space remind you at all about D-Day? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. It was just like, and you know, people walking over and just being like, oh, you know, it was like the day before D-Day with all the, the, uh, Shanna, why are you turning purple? Because that's going to be the name for the new book, Butt Plugs in Space. Shannon is unable to speak now. <laughs> um, she is literally turning purple. Um, <laughs> But I, yes, it did a little bit. But I think that's what an invasion, anytime you have an aerial invasion of like those kind of troops, that's kind of what it looks like. She a, she's still laughing. <laughs> she's laughing so hard her boobs are shaking. <laughs> so it's not in the chat. So that must have come through in the phone. <laughs> Is there a red phone, a red crotch in the room now? No, I, she, it was the butt plugs from space that got her. Okay. <laughs> I get to see that as the title of the new book. Butt plugs from space. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, at least reentry would cleanse them. <laughs> reentry. Re yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon can't deal with it. Okay. She keeps pushing the mic away, like, ah. Okay, I'm better now. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. It did remind me of the World War II thing. And I think on purpose, anytime you have an aerial bombardment of troops and, and all that, yes. But the thing is, these shock troops are seriously bad. Like, you know, it's one to many versus how effective these guys are. And if you get them in groups, they just become wolf hunting parties in the human races. Votans, everybody's screwed. Daytag made an interesting stat in his provocation of Doc Yule. He said that there were millions of inhabitants of Earth still. So the population, it's not billions, but at least it's millions, right? And the number of OMAC on board the ship is around 10,000. He said, well, how many are you prepared to lose? Three, 4,000? And especially with all your inbreeding issues, of course, reference to the incense and stuff. They're going to have to learn how to play. They can't just come in and conquer because, yes, humans doesn't like conquerors from space. I mean, we've already taken care of one invasion and then the resurgence of that invasion. And now we've got a third one. Yeah, we'll take care of it. And you could tell the look on her face that she was actually listening to him. Well, she was worried about it. She hadn't considered it. She hadn't considered it. She's too busy trying to Well, which eat, is the math. Stama. It's the math that Tefkin did. When he was thinking about it and he saw what was going on, he's like, you know, we don't have enough. This isn't enough to sustain us the way we were. We have to change. That's right. And I think if he was allowed to be the leader and tell everybody, look, guys, we're screwed. We got to change. I think they would have listened to him. But Kinsey is business as usual. In fact, worse than business as usual. Here, we're going to do a dread harvest. Somebody's going to have to give. I mean, this is not a natural balance situation. So they're going to be jacked if they decide to do a dread harvest because they'll force the votan and the humans to slaughter them all and kinsey seems to be the only one who's absolutely bulletproof because the homeboy in the back of the truck there took six to the face and that seemed to kill him pretty good mm -hmm. well it could be because they just haven't gotten their strength back because they were in sleep for a while i mean you saw when they landed they were still like a bunch of zombies and they uh, yeah allegedly they had done something on the ship to rehydrate or you know whatever they needed to so yeah they need sustenance they need something for them to survive and it's just been a while and i think they're weaker when they start out with which is why you know when nolan comes and saves samir they were able to kill all those omac that were around samir as well, well that was one lucky doc <laughs> surrounded by all, like five or six of them it's not a doc he's a vet he's a doc okay I don't know. The Snoopy dance he did on the ground was pretty cool. Uh, I <laughs> like that one. Well, that's what he did. <laughs> that's you know? what he did. He was doing his Snoopy dance on the ground. So, you know what? I like Samir. 
I do. He's a total red shirt. I can't believe they killed Adina before they killed Samir. I know. I know. What was wrong with the order of things there? Holy crap. Uh, but then again, you know, this season's been famous for that. You know, they killed the entire Macaulay family. They killed, I mean, they're just slaughtering people. It's like you have to sit there and that's the scary thing about the season. No one is safe. You I don't, don't like that, actually. You don't know exactly. I don't know who's going to die, who's going to make it. Who's, I mean, we have one episode left, right? Yes. How many are they going to kill off? Well, they've mentioned before. Do they not intend to have a fourth season because they're killing off everyone? What's wrong with these people? I don't know. And SP has made it. He's like, look, I almost rage quit after the first part of season three. And I think they did that on purpose to us, to be honest. Well, no, to shock us. To Oh, they won't be expecting this. And even I think somebody had said that uh, Kevin Murphy was like, yeah, nobody's going to like the front end of this season. You know, they're not going to be happy with me. Mm -hmm. We weren't. (laughs) No. You killed some of our favorites, you know, Christy, Rafe. I mean, it's like, holy crap, man. What are you going to do? Yeah, shows like that, like Game of Thrones or Walking Dead or whatever. I I don't actually like those. No, I, I don't watch them. I don't like them because of that. I watched both Game of Thrones until this past season. There's still four episodes of this last season that have come out that I haven't seen yet, and I don't know if I will. And Walking Dead, I've watched up to this point, but I, I'm just not feeling it. I mean, Fear of the Walking Dead, as we record this, will premiere in a few hours. And I don't, I don't know if I want to watch it. I don't think I will. I think I want to devote my time to shows that I like better, like Killjoys or Dark Matter or 12 Monkeys and that sort of thing. Not that 12 Monkeys is entirely a light show, but it's more my speed rather than this death and destruction. And I just hope Defiance doesn't end up going there. Well, I think they've already kind of been there, but I hope they don't stay there. Yeah. I hope they don't finish out there because like you were saying, the only place we haven't gone yet is space with the show so i'm thinking we're going to end up there yeah doc Yule needs her space rv she needs to get up there <laughs> so my prediction and my hope is that you know now that doc has come back to her senses a little bit maybe they can go save stama go up into the spaceship can you imagine doc Yule on mars that'd be awesome or the moon even that'd be great they need to take stama up on that spaceship and let her give some tea to the ones that are still sleeping no, nah, i think they just need to shut off the life support on all the hot pocket tubes and then see space where them. kinsey Equally is fine. I'm fine with that. But the problem is, then I don't know get, if they, they drop somewhere. I don't know if they keep them alive long enough to make it through reentry or anything. I don't know how durable those pods are, and I don't want to like seed the Earth with hungry Omec. Well, you take the RV and a little trip. You go to Venus and you drop them on the surface of Venus. There ain't no way they're surviving there. Oh, I'd be <laughs> fine with that. That's fine. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that point. We're recording yeah. to 2047 in the uninhabited place of Australia. Um, I don't know. I see. Mm. I just don't think it'd be. So you'd endanger the entire kangaroo species. <laughs> Poor koala bears. No, I wouldn't do that to them. I won't you want know. there anywhere on the face of I want to incinerate I them. I would want to. <laughs> I want to make sure that they don't exist anymore. Yeah, throw them into the sun. I would I would like have that. enjoyed seeing a little tan except on for all the Stama, hot ones. though. You know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> 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 except for Kinsey. <laughs> yeah, except for Kinsey. I don't. Nothing happens to my girl. Yeah, we, hear me? we need to have a Kinsey intervention with you, Sean. I would have enjoyed seeing a little tan on Stama. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, get some color on that girl i don't think you can get color on that girl oh i'm sure you could yeah you just wipe off the white paint <laughs> <laughs> i've been on stama not on jamie <laughs> jamie nice. has color yeah <laughs> wipe off the paint too. so we have one episode left i hate to admit it but i'm preparing myself for a death of a main character i don't know who it's going to be but you've got doc yule you've got nolan you've got amanda you've got berlin you've got the tars Heck, Alec, I think, is even up for that, and I don't know who it's going to be. Well, let me say this. I think, not just as the characters, but as a show, I think if you lose, who I call the main four. Now, people may disagree, and that's okay, but to me, the main four are Nolan, Arissa, Stama, and Daytech. And not Stama, not Jamie, because I like Jamie, but Stama is a main character that, it's been pretty much a Tar-centric season, along with the other deaths that they've had. I don't think you can lose those four characters and still have a show. That being said, I think sometimes, I think Alec, I would have said that he would have been an easy red shirt, but he has come into his own season. So to me, that leaves Doc, Berlin, and Amanda. I hope we don't lose any of them, but if we're going to lose any, it'll be one of those three. Uh. And we already know it could have been Doc, but we don't know why Berlin left for a couple episodes. Even if we lose Doc, we still retain Trenna because there are clones. Because there's other other options but why did we lose berlin for a couple because episodes because she wanted and why to go she come back? on a well-armed booty call i think there's more to it she wanted a truck she's like hey i can take she got a cool ass truck 
that's uh, that's my opinion at the end of the season. If we're going to lose anybody, it could be Berlin or Amanda or Doc. But now, we, like you said, we have other clones. I would hate for Amanda to go because, like Nolan said in their little moment right underneath Clarence, and we haven't talked about Clarence yet. We had a full, like, 10 seconds of Clare, a brilliant Clarence. Clarence the Frog, again, Sean named Clarence. Clarence is in Doc Yule's office. So we saw Clarence in full HD, multiple angles. Thank you very much, Defiance, for showing us Clarence. We're going to claim that was for us. Yes. Whether it was or not, whether it was just some, like, we haven't shot this before, or we haven't done this angle in Doc Ewell's office, we're claiming that was for us. Well, we're going to do that because Trina says that she thinks and she hopes that they did it for us. Yeah, she hopes. From Voice of Defiance, yeah. But anyway, you had that moment between Amanda and Nolan, and he's like, you are the heart of Defiance. And I think without Amanda, that heart, it just ain't there. I think the town doesn't function. There's nobody left to run the town. Sure there is. Kinsey. No. (laughs) No, he would be great. Kinsey cannot survive this season. Don't don't say mean things like that. (laughs) (laughs) What do you want to hurt me like that? (laughs) Nicole's fine, Sean. It's Kinsey that we're talking about. I don't see how you're going to be able to keep the person who you know. They brought her on as the antagonizing bad person of the season. Maybe she has a younger sister who looks just like her. (laughs) You know, like Barbie and Skipper. You know what? Her daddy had several (laughs) that looked just like him. Uh, See? Maybe there's another one. I would be fine with that if they look like her. I think they're going to have to end the Olmec. Oh, Yeah. Or they'll end all the other Olmec and she'll escape and that will bring us into a fourth season. All right. Defiance game people, you need to make an Olmec selection so that I can make my own Kinsey. There you go. And then I would be fine. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so cool if you could play as an Omek in the game. Like enhanced strength, enhanced speed. You could eat your enemies, but you can't touch a gun. Not Ooh. with their weapons, though, because they suck in the game. I would love <laughs> to see an Omek versus a Hellbug. I would love to see. Oh, I, my God. It wouldn't even be a, I mean, a I, Hellbug mother or something or like yeah. a, one of the big ones. But the Skitterling, she just eat those. I know. Those like what crab. if she could put one of those stim controls in, in a Hellbug? I don't think I it don't works. I don't think you could because I think frogs are inherently wily. Yeah. And. <laughs> Yule was genetically engineered for slavery. She, I mean, See? Kenzie didn't just pop this out on her own. This was a known thing that they had in their memory banks on board the Saraz. Well, what it could be. And, and the root of Hellbugs come from Kermit the Frog. So it's like, hey, cool, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and they, then they eat you. So, yeah. <laughs> like the and Muppet frogs show. are terrifying if you're flies. <laughs> the, like the Muppet show that we used to watch Saturday nights as kids. It's the Hellbug show. Exactly. Who's going to be Gonzo with the horn that, you know, they just eat the horn, though. They wouldn't blow it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the Hellbug mother would be like the, the, or the Miss Piggy would be like the Hellbug mother. That I could see. Absolutely. Miss Piggy is diabolical. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. She is borderline psychotic. No, no, she definitely is. And possessive (laughs) as well. Exactly. I can tell you who I absolutely believe makes it to the end of the season will be Baby Luke. Uh, I don't know about that. Cause I, uh, he almost got eaten yeah, at I, the end of this episode. They cannot end a show on eating a baby. I'm sorry. Yes, they can. <laughs> they did no. end the show on eating a baby. She wasn't eating him. She was sniffing him. And someone is going to come her, and kick her butt. Her jaw was unhinging around his head. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. I think she's going to use it to torment Daytac. I think she's going to try to, in her, in her mind, she's going to kill everybody in the Macaulay house. And she's going to go back to Daytac's cage and say, look, this is your grandson. Your wife's dead, but here's your grandson. I'm going to eat it and have a little Pop-Tart right in front of him. I think that's what's happening. I think this is going to be the moment that brings the Tar family completely back together, and they are going to conquer and beat Kinsey. I don't. Baby. I mean, they're not. Going to kill, they're not going to kill no freaking baby. I'm telling you, I could not watch that because you know that little baby in real life was freaking terrified and I'm terrorized. You, we were talking to Trenton yesterday, and I was like, uh, "That child is going to have purple nightmares for the rest of its days." Yeah, yeah. If they're, I mean, I will agree, it, Sean has this thing for those of you that don't know sean has this thing called the shoot the dog moment where he'll refuse to watch anything the moment they shoot a dog right that is true i love dogs they are my homies they are puppies and if you harm or shoot a dog i will quit watching or if i know you're going to do that i will not watch whatever media it is i just won't as a mother it's hard to watch them watch the baby cry like that too i couldn't listen to it but even seeing his face i mean you can't make a baby fake that he was really scared yeah so like later on in life when because they're twins right so later on in life 
the two of them will they'll see this on camera and they won't know which one of them it is yes they will because one of them will have wild <laughs> nightmares are the purple people eaters of purple they'll be terrified of purple for the rest of their days <laughs> oh that must have been me <laughs> i think they both will i because they they'll they'll be both be like, oh, that's me. Oh, I'm gonna wonder why they scream crazily when they hear the purple. Yeah, but I, song. but I do have the shoot the dog type of thing. Like if I know that they do harm mm-hmm. to a dog, I like I can't. I couldn't watch. Um, I am legend. Like nope, right? Can't do it. So can't do it. I, if they go that route with the baby, I think all bets are off, and they're gonna lose all their viewership, including uh, at least two thirds, if not three thirds, of this cast. So I can't really believe that they're gonna do that. Although, you know, Trenna was kind of scary when she mentioned her kids, you know, as when she was playing a human. Uh, Laura, was that the Yeah, human she name? named her character Laura. Yeah, Laura. So Laura's kids, and she said, you could bring Laura back. And I think the only way that you could do that is that the kids have died. And I'm like, oh, you're harsh. What's <laughs> <laughs> your mean, mama? Those damn children, they always get in the way of my acting. They always get in the way of everything. <laughs> Trent is not babysitting my kids or my grandkids let's put i mean would you trust i don't know she can come babysit mine uh really <laughs> yes we could try yeah. that out sometime okay our kids would eat trina for lunch <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get on the set during season four and bring your kids and we'll see how they do and kayla would never shut up yeah i was gonna say they have to do something in self-defense kayla wouldn't just she just keep talking well, you got teeth can i hold them can, can I, I hold them? them? Can I, you know, that's cool. Is that a gun? Can I have it? Does it really shoot people? I wonder what it does. How's Do that working? Do you have the crayon that made you purple? <laughs> I would really like to play with that, please. Is that makeup? I can have makeup. Why don't somebody do that to me? Where's the trailer? Enough. I want to do this. Why come you get to do it? I'm big. Yes, Trina, come take my kids. Yes, go. <laughs> take our child. What are those needles for? <laughs> exactly. Oh, look, those are the little blue pills that Daddy has. Oh, look, have you watched Frozen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Frozen? <laughs> Let it go. I would be unbearable on little blue pills. <laughs> Shannon already says I'm a freak as it is. I don't think I need to be a freak turned on 24-7. It's already kind of how it is. All right. Shannon's just looking over there like, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna be drawn into this Mm-mm. conversation. Mm-mm. All I know right. where this goes. <laughs> so next week, episode 13, the season finale, Upon the March We Fittest Die. And that's why we're focusing on dead characters because there's die in the title. What's the name of the title? Upon the March We Fittest Die. What the hell? I know. Kevin, come on. Kevin killing me. Yeah. I take that back. Sci-fi, you're killing me. Get off your butt and renew it already. That's right. Renew Defiance. Hashtag Renew Defiance. So the only ratings that we actually Defiance and Dark Matter were called out specifically last week because they showed the top 100 shows. Guess what wasn't on it? Defiance or Dark Matter. But whoever's writing the article must listen to the podcast because they're like, okay, so here are the Defiance and Dark Matter numbers. The 18 through 49 demographic was 0.21. That is down from the season high at 0.3 last week. And then that translates into 1.1 million viewers. Now, that is just live viewers. That is just the demographic. So they are still probably hanging on around two, two and a half million. Look at that. They copied you. They copied your news. Who copied it? Now, you have to say, you said they must have been listening to, to the podcast. Yeah, they must have, because out of the top 100 shows, Defiance and Dark Matter was not on it. So, and the article, they specifically called out Defiance and Dark Matter above the, the table. The 100 that were there? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, we just want Star Pie to shut up. So, here you go. So, anyway, it, it was brought up in the renew category of we're not sure if this is going to hold up, but we wish the shows well, as do we. We'd love to see the shows. So they mentioned Defiance and Dark Matter. Did they? Would, did Killjoys make it, or did they just not mention Killjoys? They did not specifically mention Killjoys. I did not search the table. I'm telling you, between the two that I've watched, I kind of like Killjoy better. I mean, I like Dark Matter, but... I don't, I don't know. I'm a huge Killjoy fan. If I was going to start a podcast about a show that wasn't going to make it, it would be Killjoys. Killjoys Level 6. That yeah, I, I really have enjoyed this season, so cool. it's been super cool. It's not that Dark Matter is not good. I enjoy Dark Matter as well. I just like Killjoys better, mm-hmm. you know, and SP's the, I think you're the reverse of that, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, just like, I mean, I if I would have to say I'd be like 5149 between the two. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I can I mean, tell you, I don't know the characters' names on Dark Matter because 
I'm normally at work when hmm. defiance Characters comes on. names. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> it's not See? hard. <laughs> Obviously. Cool. But see what I'm saying? Well, I'm usually at work when defiance comes on. So if I get the chance to sneak away and hide in front of a TV for an hour, it's great. But I'm never get past that hour. So once the other two shows start coming on, I got to get up, right? So I, I don't ever get to watch Dark Matter or Killjoys. But I happened to come through the room the other day when Dark Matter, when she was kicking that guy's ass and breaking his arm and stepping on him. I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down and watch this. <laughs> yeah, two's a badass. She's pretty cool. She is. Love her. I would love to know their back history, uh, what their skills really are, that sort of thing. But I'm sure we'll get that Maybe eventually. Find the episode that yeah, they spaced her in that last episode. I know. She crawled back all over the ship, waited for somebody to go, broke something so they'd have to come out, killed that dude, released his gravity boots and popped his oxygen supply and let him float off the ship and then got back into the ship and started killing the insurgents who had taken over her ship. I mean, she's a badass. Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go watch Dark Matter. Yeah. I mean, she really is. She is the equivalent of Dutch in Killjoys, only to. only more powerful because she cannot be killed. I wonder if basically. that's an episode that Amanda directed. It was pretty cool. That I well, I would say that the last two or three episodes of Dark Matter have been the best episodes I've seen, and they just get better. So well, it's been, if it's we been don't get a season cool. four Defiance, all three of us have to start thinking of something else. So <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not picking up another podcast. I, I'm not sure I was... <laughs> entirely convinced of Amanda Tapping's performance in Killjoys, you know, a couple weeks ago. Amanda Tapping's performance? She was in Killjoys? I haven't seen it. I don't know. Yeah. Samantha Weir was in... Not Samantha Weir. Dr. Weir. Yeah. Elizabeth Weir. Elizabeth Weir, sorry. Yeah. Tori Higginson. Tori Higginson. She was in Killjoys. That I saw, and I told her about it. Her do- yeah, Dr. Weir was in was in Killjoys. I didn't know Amanda Tapping was in it. Was she? I thought she played that doctor that now I'm getting all confused. Now you know you're going to make me have to go back and watch it because you know how I feel about Amanda. All right. I'm just going to do a quick IMDb because if I don't, this is going to bug me. I swore it was Amanda tapping. In the meantime, give me your predictions of the end of Defiance. The end of Defiance or how next think, episode? How do you think the end is going to be on Defiance? Yeah, she was Dr. Yeager in Killjoys in both Escape Velocity and Kiss Kiss Bye Bye. Bye bye. I did not recognize her then. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. She was, Tori she, is in Killjoys and Amanda is in Dark Matter, is what Ryan E. says. Amanda's filmography. Amanda's in Dark Matter, which makes sense because she directs some of it. Dark Matter is the one that's created by Stargate people. Okay, so she played... Dr. Yeager was the one that was the doctor that implanted the memories in the brother in oh, Killjoys. <sighs> Killjoys, Dr. Yeager. Let's see if we can get some I can't images believe I out Amanda tapped you. Oh, yeah. yes, she was. Yeah. That yeah, see, Shannon, you're behind. I, we've already established this. <laughs> I don't watch either one of them. I happen to see it in passing. Thank you, Suncast. Thanks for the backup. Yeah, I'm finding pictures of it. She's right there. Yeah, she was in the white coat in the little yeah, lab with Amanda. her. Yeah. God, geez, guys. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm going insane here. <laughs> yeah, okay. So my theory is that they go up to the ship, they kill the Omec, and either they have the ship and they drive to a new planet or whatever, or they come back down. But maybe somebody dies on the ship. I don't know. Dies in the title of the freaking episode. I think we're going to lose a character. I don't know if it's going to be one of the four, but it's going to be one of those like eight or so characters. So we'll see. I think if you killed little Luke, you could kill Alec. And it wouldn't be a problem. If you kill Luke, the show's over. They can't do that. Yeah. Yes, they can. They've killed plenty they of children. Do I that. know, but not babies. They've killed plenty of people not, in this show. Not and babies. They even killed Ra- I would not put this past Kevin Murphy to kill a baby on screen. No, I would not put I, that past I would not, and not in this day and age when that's when they where they think they're going to get the ratings. Because yeah. everybody talks about that on Game of Thrones. Oh my God. Or, everybody will talk about all it. All the Macaulays, the baby, and Alec. I, I'm telling you, family genocide. They, they could kill a baby on this show and have an alien eat it. And that would be, I, I would not put that past Kevin. I Murphy. would have a hard time watching the last episode of the season then. I would I'm not. not saying it wouldn't be horrible and we wouldn't quit watching the show. I'm saying they could do that for the shock value. Because look what they did at the beginning of it. They Kevin, could go please out don't just do that. as bad. Please don't do that. And, and so, I mean, and you know already from trying to talk to us that they're, they're messing with their story. I mean, they've changed it already once with Trina dying and not dying and it really being her and very not, like she told us yesterday. So I'm saying he could decide at the last minute, let's kill a baby. And that could be the okay. fourth or the third cliffhanger. Who do you think we're going to lose? Main character. The baby. 
That's your okay. That's your prediction. No one else? Uh, Just the baby? Uh, no, though we'll probably, and I hate to say it, but I think they'll probably either kill or incapacitate in some way, Kinsey. Okay. What about USP? Mm. Well, let's just say this. I think Kinsey's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, SP. <laughs> I was like, you didn't even let me answer. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm not important. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. He's that guy. The monkey that flips the switches. Yeah. So, I don't know, in my head, I'm going back and forth between New Orleans and Berlin, and I think it's going to be Berlin out of those two. I could see that. Amanda I, could be thrown in there as well, but I just, I don't know. I don't want any of them to die. At this point, we have so few left. I don't want to lose any of them. They could kill Amanda in some kind of tragic, heroic way and make her like a martyr or something like that. They could totally do that. Yeah. I, I would see that. You know, like that whole speech could have been set up to make her the martyr in the town furious when she died and unite them and stuff. I could see that. I think it's going to be Berlin. I and hope I don't not. Know if, I don't know if Kenzie's going to escape after they kill her other beeps or they're going to lose Kenzie also. But maybe that will take us into the fourth season and them chasing the, you know, crazy Omic to the world. But I think we're going to lose Berlin. I hope not. Please let me be wrong because I love Berlin. I, uh, Anna is my favorite of who's left. And that's just my personal preference. I mean, I like them all. Trenna's great too, and everybody. I'm. I actually like Grant and Nolan and how he plays it and stuff. But if they're all like at a score of ninety eight or ninety nine, Anna's just one above that for me. I just like her. Yeah, that's it. Berlin. I like you. Well, I don't want to lose Berlin because that would lose Barbie in the show. You know, my Barbie Your character, character is named after my, her. My character in the game is named after Berlin. Barbie Punch. Yep. Yeah. I love Berlin. So as Defiance winds down, we have, and if you like this sort of content, we have a bunch of other shows on the Gunna Geek Network that talk about other shows that are running throughout the rest of the year, like Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. And right now, in this summer, we, I am the host of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. We were doing a rewatch of Daredevil as we gen up for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this fall. And the latest episode released was number 79, Daredevil World on Fire. And we discussed the episode, and we had Kier, another Gonna Geek co-host podcaster on there, and as well as Chris Farrell from All Things Good and Nerdy. So, but the most important thing would definitely be Neil isn't witty. He does a weekly Mighty Marvel moment where he runs down all of the comics from the past week, all the Marvel comics. It is a fun five minutes, so come and listen to us as we run it all down and talk about the weekly news and stuff like that in the marvel universe because you guys are lovely peoples <laughs> leave it at that <laughs> all right so we got some tremendous feedback this week on facebook christopher he messaged us as he has been for the past few weeks he said yep day tech is pretty much wolverine now doubt it will happen but i'm hoping day tech jumps kinsey with the he claws play. to come out of his knuckles of course he does exactly and the arm spike to save his family feel sorry for endina but when she gave alec advice i knew that stama was like as a younger woman absolutely and we talked about it before we definitely have a voicemail from down under i know sean you want to hear it so here we go Hi Shannon, Sean and Starfy. Uh Wow, what an amazing episode. There were so many incredible moments. Yay, dog's free. It was actually really sweet that it was her beloved side braid that freed her. I'm really glad Samir didn't die again. I think he and Doc will play off each other really well if he doesn't die next episode and if we get a season four. Nolanda's kiss was very sweet. I think Amanda and Nolan bring out the best in each other, so it's a really positive relationship. Uh, poor and Dina, I take back everything bad I said about her. She was a good guy. Daytac with the spike and those OMAC, so badass. I think Daytac's awesome this season. Berlin and Arissa working together pretty much works for me on pretty much every level. Um, yes, Defiance. If you kill baby Luke, we're going to have to have words and they're not going to be nice words. So don't do that. And Sean, this is a personal cookie intervention. Kinsey is sexy, but she's nuts and evil and nuts, and she eats people and not in a good way. So don't, just don't go there. Okay. I can't wait to hear what you guys think as usual. Bye. Yes, <laughs> we definitely have to have that intervention. So Sean, tomorrow night, we're all going to come to your house and we're going to talk about how you need to wean off of the Kinsey. 
All right, bring pictures of Kinsey. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to start talking to Coolmore on Twitter. Ugh. I'm sorry. That girl is hot. It's there. Her character's hot. She's hot. She's uh, wildly intelligent. Yes, it's all good. There's only one minor drawback, and that's that you may possibly die screaming and in pain, and that's kind of worth possibly. it. Possibly, I think that's a given. Well, you know, she said Nolan would live out the rest of his natural years before she ate him. I mean, that's pretty considerate. Yeah. If <sighs> yeah. I guess, but you'd be the only one and you'd be seeing everybody die That's around kind of you. the same deal I have now. You know, it's <laughs> like, I'll live out the rest of my days before Shannon shoots me and then that'll be fine. You know, I might shoot you. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to way. define natural then. So, <laughs> yeah, see, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same deal. I married like Kinsey Light over here. I see. Yeah. Is she purple? Surprisingly enough, no. That would help, though. She turned purple earlier in the podcast. <laughs> it seems sometimes, you know. So thank you very much, Libby, for your insights. We really appreciate it. Keep them coming. It's always great to hear from you. We also got a nice email note from Suncast. Thank you, sir, for thinking of us. We really appreciate that. We also got an iTunes review. Woohoo! Best Defiance podcast ever. It was written by Sad Broken App, and it reads, If you want a great podcast about the awesome show Defiance, look no further. They not only have great guest stars, but they keep you in stitches with their banter back and forth. Great talk about the show and highly addictive. I look forward to the show each week. Thanks, all. You guys rock. Log! That was awesome. That was. Log! Thank you very much, Sad Broken App. We really appreciate that. It's our log brother or sister right there. We got a lot of Twitter feedback over the week. We started the week on a poll again, which if you were Christy, who would you rather have as the mother of Luke? Would it be Andina or Arissa? And, you know, it was pretty much half and half, but you know, Andina is no more, so it doesn't really matter. I think Andina, Andina would have been a more caring cast than mother. I think Little Wolf would have been a better mother overall, but probably Andina was more nurturing. Yeah. I think in this day and age, when the charge blade actually gets given to Luke eventually, that Arissa will be able to teach Luke how to use it effectively, possibly even more effectively than Daytac, because it's a knife. I would agree with that, although yeah. I think Indina would make a more well-rounded person, but I don't know if well-rounded people survive long in the <laughs> town of Defiance, so it might be better for your survival if, if Arissa was your mother, but you might be a better person if Indina was your mother. I think Indina had the Stalma thing going. I mean, she... Definitely yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit, Stammer. but still, I, I don't know. It's she just seemed more warm and nicer, really. Plus, yeah. she was wicked hot. <laughs> she so, was. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I might go with Indina if it was like me picking because Little Wolf has got kind of that basket of crazy thing going. Oh, that's all you, though. You love that. Not for the mother of my child. Fun to play with, yes. Don't get me wrong, yes. But mother of your child, you kind of want the stable one. Yeah, yeah, true. And we had several different conversations. Uh, there was one about food and thunder at WX4CB wrote us and he said, Hellbug Pancakes, we really need to do a Defiance recipe book. Kinsey's Blueberry Pancakes, Favitar Tea, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think we'd buy that. We'll even sell it on the Voices of Defiance website for you. Anyway, next week we have episode 13, Upon the March We Die Fittest. We thank you very much. We thank everybody that is in the chat room. We thank Trena for spending some time with us in her garden yesterday. So we're looking forward to that. But thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thank you for all the tweets. Thanks for the iTunes reviews. That allows other people to f help find us because they see how good we actually are and how great the community is because it's not just about us it's about the community and we thank everybody that is in the chat room i said that before but we really do uh, the comments as we're talking are fantastic and we appreciate them so next week we will be back here same bat channel same bat time we might go another week as well so we'll just hang on to your hats on that and stay tuned but until next week, I'm Stargate Pioneer, Shannon. See you guys. And Mr. Sean. Just remember, when you're eating a baby on national television, smile. Smile. <laughs> with your teeth, right? Yeah. Okay. With your big mama, with the big teeth you have. <laughs> like in a Colgate representation. Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. 
If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Voices of Defiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com. Or send us a voicemail on area code 612-888-ARC1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Tryon video game Defiance. Music titled after the apocalypse by Schneeschnook and Rocket Easy by Sound Rogue can be found on Pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hellbugs. Another funny thing is that the 14-year-old decided to play Grand Theft Auto and is totally into that. We're like, okay. Wow. I know. The Halo playing Grand... She just surprises me from time to time. <laughs> she just surpri- She just surprises me. <laughs> She's like, oh, Dad, can you put the Grand Theft Auto on? And she goes downstairs to the old PS2 games because Sandrock had Grand Theft Auto, I think, 3 or whatever on the PS2. And so she comes up. She's like, can I play this on the Xbox? I'm like, no, no. Uh, you got a gamer chick, man. <laughs> I know. I know. She's got an Xbox in her room, too. She's got the actual, she's got the Star Wars version of Xbox in her room. Star Wars version? Like the new one? No, no, no. It was a 360 special edition. Oh, I was going to say, holy she got a she got an Xbox One Star Wars edition. I didn't even know they were out yet. No, no, I've been contemplating the Master Chief edition of the of the Xbox One, but like I said, I've got to pay off a, a few things. That's the first. one I've got. Oh, nice. So anyway, she comes up and is like, "Well, I really want to play with my friends." I'm like, mm, "Okay." So I downloaded it for her, but it took forever. Just uh, it was a seven gig file, and it took like two hours or something like that you've, like, you've never seen a more impatient person than shannon loading a game <laughs> update for <laughs> defiance for defiance <laughs> Man, that, last night no the night before because i hadn't been on in a week and i had to sit through like 20 minutes of a download of an update i'm like you <laughs> s- freaking sucking son of a <laughs> <laughs> feel our pain woman feel our yeah, pain that's, it. that's not even like a long one you know like some of those things like in, especially if you're doing xbox because xbox comes from microsoft servers and it's very slow you could okay. You you are downloading yeah. one tenth of one percent of twenty one meg or twenty one gig. They're like, hey, hey, where, where's Barbie? Where, where's she coming in? I'm like, hang on, I'll be there in a minute. She goes, hey, we're in the middle of a volt seat. Just just jump jump to me when you get there. I'm like, okay, I'm like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> I'll see you when the battle's done. <laughs> damn it, <laughs> damn it, Shannon's on. Damn it, damn it. Yeah, Shannon's Twitter twenty four seven all the time. Right as right as we mentioned it. Okay. I could be on fire, and Shannon would finish her tweet and then put me out. I have priorities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you gotta. I mean, the tweet does come. I mean, if there is a fire, you'd probably take a picture of it and then tweet it first. Oh, before probably. You call, She'd be like, call I'm like, fire. I'm on fire. Shannon's like, I'm finishing my tweet, but I'm on fire. What? It's 165 characters. You can wait. <laughs> Says the person who drives right by a car accident. It was two in the morning. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go home. <laughs> I made him stop and turn around. <laughs> That's what 911 is for. That's right. Hey, uh, do you guys have the Good Samaritan law down in Texas? No. Are you kidding me? I, We're I, lucky I, we have seatbelt laws. Right. Yeah, we do. No, yeah, we yes, don't. we do. No, we don't. Where Look. you get fined if they if you pass by somebody in need, basically. Especially no, if you're a... we do not have that. Oh, uh, okay. So that's what the Good Samaritan law is. And don't forget, we, we didn't mention this on the cast, but there's all those possible people that are still in their egg cocoons down below. Oh, and I wanted to mention this on the cast, too, that the, Nolan's uh, scar has never gone away this season. So this could all literally be a dream that he is having. Oh, that'd be such a Dallas way to do things. I know. But, I mean, what's with the scar? Arissa's scar is gone. Why is Nolan's scar still there? I think because she ripped it out of his head. To reopen the... Okay. Reopen the scar. All right. Yeah. I thought it came out the top of his head, though, not the side. But No, no. Came yeah. out the same scar that was there. So, yeah. I mean, she ripped it out there. Oh, and that tech is still in Arissa. So, she, when if Arissa is actually on the Surus, then it could reactivate? Could be. Yeah. Although, that was Votan tech, not Omec tech. Doesn't matter. It's all 
you know, because who who made the Omec tech? It was the. Uh, that's true. Or who made the? the yeah, the the indigen. Yeah, yeah, the indigen who are slaves of the Omec. So right. I mean, I can see that it's all interoperable. Wouldn't it be cool if, if Arista gets up there and she's like the all mother? Really, the all mother? Can she controls it all? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Then that whole title would have meaning. Yep. So, how were the cards back and forth today? All all good well wishes, or did they taper off? Yeah, they tapered off after I wrote her. You have to write her something back, otherwise she keeps delivering them. Yeah, It's so funny, she slips it through the crack of the door. <laughs> That's awesome. We used to do that at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, so, all the cousins got together at... It used to be my grandparents' house, and then it became my aunt's house. And we'd all like get bored in the afternoon, and depending on the weather, because we are talking about the tundra of the north here, we would um, just go and color and make posters and whatever. And, you know, this was me as a little kid. No artistic talent whatsoever. And, yeah, we'd, like, give them to our parents or whatever. Say, hey, you know, here's what we did. They'd say, nice. And, yeah, go watch TV now or something. So. <laughs> go watch TV now. Yeah, it seems to be the, the modus operandi. Yeah. And back then, we, it wasn't cable either or satellite for that matter. It was just broadcast TV, so... It was the two games, of course, you know, the Packers and the, the Cowboys, and then it was the um, the family movie of the night. I forget what channel had it on, but, you know, there was the Wizard of Oz on for a few years, Mary Poppins and stuff like that. And, yeah, that's okay for a little while, but it's like, can we just go home? Can, I want to go home now. Can we go home? <laughs> just, I don't, I don't want to be here, you know, I wanna, really. I want to play my Atari 2600. I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think sometimes that's what like taking your kids to relatives is for you know it's like see how good you have it yeah that's right <laughs> you could live here hey Kayla how you doing oh, he's talking to you yeah Kayla this is Mr. SP again we hey. talked last week how you doing she's under the table now <laughs> <laughs> uh, under the table with the mixer uh no she's she's under the uh the here little podcast table here come, come up with mama there you go Hey, kiddo. So, uh, how's that guitar solo going? He's asking. Yeah. She, she's looking frozen at Jen and like, I'm not doing this. All right, hold on. This will help. I'm, I'm going to school tomorrow. You're going to school? To, you know, my son just had his first day in college on Friday. He did. Tell him what grade you're starting. Kindergarten. See, there he is. Kindergarten. Kindergarten? That's so uh-huh. cool. Are you going all day or just half a day? All day. All day. Sweet. So, do you know anybody in your class yet, or are you going to make new friends? Well, you got you to meet some friends. Yeah, you got to meet new people. You've met your teacher, though. Uh-huh. She was nice. Do you know how many people are going to be in your class? Mm-hmm. About 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Okay. So, you know one of the things that they do in kindergarten is they do show and tell. Do you know what that is? What? That's when you bring something from home that you do or that's important to you, and you tell everybody about it. They show the class? It. Yeah. yeah. Like show and tell? Yep. Yeah. You show people your stuff? Yep. You yeah. show people your stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's called show and tell. What would you bring? Um, 15 toys. <laughs> 15? Do you bring 15 <laughs> toys? You don't bring one toy. Just, just, just one. Stuff, what would you bring? Um, my unicorn. Unicorn. Your unicorn? Nice. Yeah. Well, Not everybody has one. a unicorn. That's true. Not everybody has one. I have two. Yes, you do. Well, aren't you special? <laughs> I have a big one. Mom. All right. So you have to explain what unicorns are to everybody. So if you were to they're tell... They're unicorn ponies. They're, they're ponies. Okay. So they're ponies, but they have a, a horn on their head. Uh-huh. Right? They have... Uh-huh. They have my... The big one has my... The big one is my... The ra- rainbow is rainbow pattern. Rainbow. Oh, okay. And the horn's pink. A pink horn. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the small one's purple. You know, they call Jamie a unicorn queen. Really? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Mama likes Jamie, don't I? Do, Michaela, do you like Jamie more in all white as Stama or as as? I don't normal? like Jamie. Not one bit. She has <laughs> it on her phone. I don't oh. like Jamie. Not one bit. That's from really? <laughs> I the, other day, the other day, she didn't get in the car and it's like, I've had these stickers for years, right? And so all uh-huh. of a sudden, she'd be like, Mama, do you have to have a Jamie sticker on your car? I'm like, did you just now realize that? <laughs> Does she even want a Jamie car? Jamie. So, really? So my daughter, she, yeah. she starts school next week, and she made me her buy her... Buy, no, she's in a uh, freshman in high school, so like, I don't know, what is that, uh, 10 years from now for you. 
And she made me buy stickers for her notebooks and everything. And then I have my own cubby. Yeah. What she what she didn't want, she gave to me. So I have stickers like this. eBay. <laughs> stickers like eBay. PayPal. PayPal. Uh-huh. Three M. Oh, sexy. Face yeah, Facebook stickers. and Google. <laughs> and let me see if you you like any of this. Uh uh Who Well, has Avengers. Oh, I, there's Avengers. You That's might good. like this. Jeep. It's a Jeep thing. <laughs> Do you know what a Jeep is? I don't. Who has stickers on that? She's just yeah. impressed with the stickers. And and Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Reese, and, uh, hold, hold on. Reese, got, Reese's toy. That's Spider Man. Got a couple for you. Oh, look at that. Who's that, Kayla? Is Superman. It, Superman. Who's that? Um. It's kind kind of weird. Batman. Oh, Iron Man. No, it's not Batman. It's Iron Man. But cl- I, good I, guess. I, I could. Good yeah, guess. I could, could see. Well, I don't know. All right, Kayla. An honest answer. This Jamie. <laughs> it's from the fire. Or this Jamie. <laughs> Both is equal. Both is equal? <laughs> mm, no, Mama likes that one better. Yeah, I don't like both. I don't like both. Okay, well, good good I work. Like, I like both. <laughs> the, guitar, the guitar music is going kind of good. Oh, yeah? So mm-hmm. are, are you uh, creating your own, or are you trying to learn a song that exists? I'm trying to learn it so I can be a good guitarist. Yeah. Have you seen Back to the Future? Nope, she hasn't seen that one. All right, that's that's. Uh, I don't know when mommy and daddy will show that to you, but it has a great guitar scene. And in guess it. what? Daddy's gonna take me to a music store. I've never been there before. Really? Right. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, I had to go to a music store Friday night because I needed to buy a chord for an interview that we did yesterday, and I okay. discovered that the music store moved into a bigger place, but they still <laughs> didn't have a lot of when podcasting did they do gear. That? <laughs> when did they do that? I, I, I don't know. I just I. I'm lucky I plugged it into my phone as I was driving down there because it's a half an hour away and I would have been all confused because it was in a different place. It was in a closed mall store. They took part of the mall. They, it was a, one of those big like JC Penney's or Sears or whatever. They JC went. Penny? Yeah, well, it wasn't JC Penney's. It's called Guitar Center and they took over a large part of that and it was neat. It was all new and neat, but again, not a lot of podcasting gear. Mm. Hey, you have a star on the shirt over there, and I have a star on my necklace. Oh, yeah, that's my Captain America thing, and this is my shirt that I'm wearing. See? Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. If, if you need, if you, Dad's a way to have Star Wars. Yes, Dad has a lot of Star Wars, yeah. He has a star activator and a star ship. And I have the same clothes that Daddy has. What? See? He's got a shirt just like Daddy. See? <laughs> you, you, you had the same shirt? Yep. His is a different number than mine, though. And a different name. See, his says Bio Digital. Dad says Big Door. Big Door? Yeah. What I? I could have been never... mean, and I could have put Big Back Door on it, but I didn't. <laughs> I got a new necklace today. That would bring a whole other meaning there. <laughs> you got a new I necklace? I got a new necklace yesterday. Yeah? What, what does it look like? I'm wearing it right now. What, 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 is, it a, is it a chain, or does it have a pennon on it, or... Pendant on it or something like that. It's a cord. It's a cord it's with stretchy. yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Yeah, and then it's got a star on it, doesn't it? Uh huh. And it changes colors like my bar necklace. Special necklace that mama bought. Cool, right? Uh huh. And there's nothing to do. And it's stretchy. You can remember. Uh, yeah. You want to see a cool plane that I worked on? Yeah. Whoa. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's really cool. Why is he daddy's plane? I, I, you know what? I know what Daddy's plane is. I gave it to him. The big green one with all the bombs underneath it. Huh? Well, the way he put together Oh, it? he's talking about Shuttle Tidarian. Oh. thought she was talking about the A-10. That's a space plane. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is that new? Or is that the Lego one that you put together? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. That's what you gave me. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, no, no, that's Uncle Bob gave me that one. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Okay. I considered getting that. I, sh- yeah. I should have. It's super cool, dude. It opens, it does all kinds oh, of stuff, and sweet. the wings fold down. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. It does all the stuff. The ability that you can play with the stuff now. <laughs> I mean, you can always play with Legos, but it was never as mobile as... Plastic. No, they're super, they're super easy to, to deal with now. I mean, they're, they, they let them be built pretty easy now. Mm-hmm. So, Kayla, what are you going to do this afternoon? I'm going to play with my friend Mariah. She's a... Sort of about the same age as me, but she's just smaller than me. Is she going to be in your class? Uh-huh, and do a lot of stuff. Are you going to take the bus? Uh-huh. 
now we know we're going to, instead of walking all the way down to the, hey, stop. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of walking like a street away, you get to be picked huh? up like right next to your house? Well, next to our driveway. Ah, that's awesome. What time does the bus pick you up? 640. That's Six. earlier than you ever get up. <laughs> 640. And I, huh? And I didn't want to get up. Yeah, I just don't see Daddy getting up that early. Daddy Dad gets up way... Daddy's gone by then. Daddy's gone by then, yeah. Uh, Mom, <laughs> I was Daddy just say, huh? to the truck. <laughs> Daddy's at work by then. <laughs> yeah, so am I. <laughs> you got to be out the door. That's right. You got to be out the door because it's school night, see? Well, what's so that? That's a little toolbox. A little toolbox? What's in it? And look. See, it lights up. Ooh, what's in it? Lots Trick of stuff. You should uh, you should get mommy to watch Agents of Shield. You'll see everything that's in this. <laughs> mama does watch. When, when does season three start? Uh, that's a good question. Late September or early October? I honestly, well, I actually do know the answer to that. Hold on. Continuum season three. Well, I know September eleventh, a- right? Yeah, September eleventh is when Continuum starts. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the last season. All right, so the first episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will be uh, September 29th. So what's for lunch, Kayla? What did you cook me for lunch? SpaghettiOs, maybe? Hot dogs? I, we didn't cook lunch yet. <laughs> well, what are you going to make me for lunch? Because I'm hungry. You? I am, because it is 1 o'clock my time. It's only 12 o'clock your time, but it's 1 o'clock here. How are we going to bring it to you? You live miles away. Don't you have transporters? Everybody has transporters now. It looks like, do we? Do, nope. we, do we have transporters, Daddy? <laughs> nope. <laughs> How about we just deliver it? Broadcast has been successfully terminated.